Today we've got a great dog related malicious compliance story. We'll get into that in a bit but first, don't trust me enough to not micromanage me? Enjoy staying late to do my job. This happened at work about 10 years ago. The context, at the time of the incident I'd been working for a big box superstore for about 12 years, five of which as a department manager, I managed three areas, fresh meat, frozen seafood, and prepackaged deli and breakfast meats. I supervised two part-timers and two full-timers. I reported to three supervisors, ranking in order, an assistant manager, a co-manager, and then the store manager. The situation, on a particular Thursday morning, it was just myself and one of my full-timers, Carl. Carl was on duty until 3 p.m., myself until 4 p.m., and no one else after. My other full-timer was on his day off. One part-timer was not available Thursday to Saturday, and the other was on vacation. Coverage was thin at best, and would continue to be that way through the weekend. Having been super light on coverage all week due to one of my guys being on vacay, the deli wall was looking a little thin. On this Thursday morning, I had to decide how best to prepare for the weekend. I knew that I wouldn't have enough staff to commit a person to filling the deli wall on Friday or Saturday. As soon as I'd finished breaking down Thursday's morning's delivery with Carl, I began busting my butt to get the deli wall as full as possible before I left that day. That way I could have my guys focus on the fresh meat wall throughout the weekend where I knew it would be super busy. While I did this, I entrusted Carl to fill the fresh meat wall for Thursday night's 4pm rush. He was a very hard worker despite his age and health. I knew he could handle it on his own. Around 11am, Carl had to take his lunch break. While he's gone, my co-manager Scott arrives to work and sees only me. And I'm filling the deli wall while only half of the fresh meat wall has been stocked thus far. Scott does not like this. He tells my assistant manager Brenda to have me swap to the fresh wall as it's more important for that night's customers. I immediately seek out Scott to tell him why this is a bad idea and why I'm filling deli meats and not fresh meats. But Scott doesn't care. He doesn't want to hear what I have to say. I am to do exactly as I am told. He does not want me to fill the deli wall, only the fresh wall. Did I mention that Scott is ex-military and still acts like he's enlisted? Cue the malicious compliance. I did exactly as Scott told me. After having only worked about an hour on the deli wall, I put all the freight back into the cooler and began filling the fresh wall. Carl returned from lunch, confused to see me. I explained what had happened before taking my own lunch. Upon my return, the fresh wall was nearly finished, but I went ahead and helped Carl continue filling it. Soon we were done and just topping it off throughout the rest of the afternoon. If someone brought a pack of beef, we went back into the cooler to bring out another. Same with chicken, pork, anything. Walking back and forth, one package at a time, until Carl left at 3pm and then I left at 4pm. As I walked past the deli wall on my way out, it was already looking so much worse than it had when I had arrived that morning. The aftermath, when I arrived to work at 7am on Friday morning, the first thing I did was walk past the deli wall. I was completely caught off guard to see it had been filled. As I'm theorizing who could have possibly have filled it, Brenda comes by and sees the puzzled look on my face. She comes over to me with a bit of a grin on her face. The following is what she had told me had happened after I left the night before. The little bit that had been on the deli wall when I'd left only continued to be shopped. More and more of the wall emptied out as people shopped. It began to look like people had been panic buying. It had gotten so empty. Around 8pm, a market manager came in to do his own shopping. I didn't explain this before, but a market manager is who my store manager reports to. In other words, someone who has even greater authority than anyone in the store. Market manager Bob goes to buy some lunch meat. Lo and behold, there's almost nothing on the shelf. He notices the entire wall is nearly bare. He is furious. Bob demands that Scott come over to the deli wall immediately. Scott runs over and gets his butt chewed. Bob orders Scott to get the wall stocked immediately. Scott is only now understanding the scope of his blunder. The wall is so empty that it'll take a few hours to fill. And it is in this moment Scott realizes how hard he has screwed up because he hadn't checked the schedule earlier and is now discovering that there's no one in the meats department that evening. There is no one he can delegate this task to. Guess who ended up having to fill the deli wall? That's right, Scott had no choice but to do it himself. And he didn't get done until midnight. Remember, he had arrived just before 11am that day. 
and he had to be back at 8 a.m. Friday. Also, Scott is salaried, so he got no overtime for the extra hours worked. Scott never did apologize to me for not trusting my judgment and for not listening to me, but he learned his lesson. From that day forward, he didn't try to micromanage me and let me run my departments unimpeded. You know, OP could have put up a fight and told Scott exactly what was going on and how they were wrong, but OP I think did the right thing in just complying and letting it happen and let Scott deal with the aftermath of their demands. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, don't remind you about your passport renewal? Cool. This happened a few years ago when my now husband and I first started dating. We were going on holiday in May in order to attend his friend's destination wedding. I don't mind his friends, but for the purposes of this story, I have to say they're more his friends than mine. He needed his passport renewed, which needs to be done every 10 years here in the UK. Knowing that we had this trip coming up and that his passport needed renewing, I reminded him in, I think, February that it was a job that he needed to do. I think the third time I reminded him about it, possibly sometime in April, he slightly snapped at me or was at least a little off and basically said, you don't need to keep reminding me, I'll sort it out. Fine. Even though this was still early in the relationship, I'd already noticed that my boyfriend, as he then was, is wonderful in many ways, but he's a bit of a procrastinator and especially has a tendency to put off boring admin type jobs such as this. I can't say I blame him, but I am the sort of person who gets things like that done as soon as I notice them, because otherwise they'll be on my mind. But he was absolutely right. This was a trip to see his friends, my passport didn't need updating, it really wasn't my job to remind him about his or chase him about it. I didn't especially care what happened either way. The trip was extremely cheap and the travel insurance might have even covered cancelling it. Malicious compliance activate! Well, wouldn't you know it, something like 5 days before we were due to leave, he sheepishly comes to me and says he still hasn't done anything about his passport. I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but I think standard lead times for passports here are at least a few weeks. So he ends up doing a priority request, or whatever it's called, where they'll fast track your application. I think from memory the basic application is 79 British pounds, and then priority on top was another 150 pounds, and possibly more for fast shipping. I think the whole thing ended up costing him around 250 pounds with everything in together when it should have been 79. My memory is blurry, but I think he also had to get new passport photos taken and authenticated quickly too, which I seem to remember was really stressful and rushed for him as well. We did get to go on the trip, as everything came through the day before we left. He apologized for having snapped at me and for asking not to be reminded about it, but by that point I wasn't even angry and honestly felt bad for how much stress and expense he'd been through. He has improved how he does his boring life admin since then. I mean, I think in a good relationship you're always kind of reminding each other of things, but yeah, if somebody gets all snooty and says you don't need to keep reminding me, well, alright, good luck. Our next story is, you think my dog is the problem here? Then let's put it to the test. This story happened a while ago, but I thought I'd still share. I live in a village with a lot of dogs, most of whom I like and will always give a tickle or treat to. However, there is this one dog and two dog owners I never want to speak to. Rita and Tom, both fake names, mid-70s, have had a golden Labrador named Birdie for the last nine years, and I say this with no exaggeration. He is the worst trained dog I have ever met. To start with, he has zero recall training. They try to call him, but clearly it doesn't work. It also doesn't help that Tom is deaf, and so can't hear if someone tells him to get Birdie back. He chases after every dog, if they want him to or not, extremely relevant for later on. Birdie is also not the friendliest dog, as he's growled and snarled at my dog, also highly relevant. I think that the two of them, being an elderly couple, maybe didn't realize how much energy Labradors have and how much training they need and maybe couldn't keep up with what Birdie needed. Just a theory, but it seems likely considering I've seen Tom get nearly dragged due to Birdie's excitement. Anyways, for context for the story, my dog Lola, 14, is a somewhat reactive dog. Important, she does not bite other dogs, just snaps at them so they get the message. She's gotten better around a lot of breeds, but is particularly wary of Labradors. 
most likely due to having to protect our other dog from a mean Labrador neighbor at our old house. While she is reactive, I do everything I can to avoid a messy situation. I put her on the leash immediately when we see a dog who she doesn't know or like and try to distract her with a treat. And yes, before anyone says, we've tried training classes multiple times, but they didn't work, so I resort to these methods. Only when I think the other dog will bound up to Lola and get in her face do I ask that the owner either put their dog on a leash or distract them for the 30 seconds we pass one another. Most owners say it's fine and just do it and then let their dogs off when we've passed, but there are a small but stubborn subsection like Rita who refuse, claiming their dog has every right to basically bound where they like and in doing so, aggravate my dog. This particular time, I was in a field near Rita's house when I saw her and Birdie coming my way. I put Lola on the leash and hesitantly asked Rita if she could put Birdie on the lead because I knew he would run up to Lola and she might snap at him. Immediately her face looks like I've asked if I could kick her dog. She's shocked and horrified and starts complaining saying that, oh this is a field, my dog will roam wherever he wants and that your dog is only aggravated because she can feel your anxiety when she's forced on the leash. She'd be happier off the leash. At this point, I've had enough of Rita's BS and her thinking she knows everything about my dog. So I smile and say, okay, then let's try that out. At this point, I let Lola off the leash. Immediately, the two dogs get in a fight. Both dogs are at blame here. They're both equally aggressive. I pull Lola away and put her back on the leash. No dog is injured in this. I made sure to get Lola away fast enough that neither dog could hurt each other while Rita did nothing. Rita scowled at me and then moved on quickly with Birdie, but now whenever we see each other, she diverts Birdie away from us. So problem solved, and she's never again questioned Lola's reactivity. I'm aware that might have been a jerk move on my part, but honestly, I didn't care. We had that same conversation far too many times that I needed to show her that some dogs simply don't like other dogs in their faces, and that Birdie was not the perfect angel she thought she was. To clarify, I knew if I let her off the leash, there wouldn't have been any physical harm done to either dog. Just a small fight which would have hopefully put Birdie and Rita in their places. I mean, I get what OP did here, but I don't know if I would have gambled with letting those dogs go at it. Even if OP felt they were assured that they'd be able to break it up in time. Especially when your dog is 14. I wouldn't want to risk that with such an elderly dog. Our next story is... I don't know if this counts... Around six months ago, my job started giving me Thursdays off because Thursday is our slowest day of the week. So I started doing what little Thursday work I'd have on Wednesdays, and other than the lower paycheck, everything was good. To make a long story short, I asked my boss for a raise two months ago. He screamed at me, so I began looking for a new job, mostly to make more money, which he's always been aware of. In fact, his wife, they co-own the company, through a three week long hissy fit because I was considering leaving. Two weeks ago, I told him I had a job offer, but was taking a week to think about it. He never once either made me an offer to stay or even asked what it would take for me to stay. So I took the job offer and put in my three week notice. Job starts June 12th. So yesterday, just before five o'clock, he calls and tells me that he wants to work Thursdays each of the next three weeks until I leave. So his punishment for me leaving for more hours and money is for him to give me more hours and money. That brings us to today. Since I did all my Thursday work yesterday, I now have literally nothing to do, so I'm complying with his demand that I work by sitting in my office and reading a book I haven't had a chance to and getting paid to do so. I just think this is a great story because it shows that OP cares about their position and cares enough to know when a situation is not right for them or when they're ready to move up. A lot of times in these situations, you might feel loyal to these people if it's a co-owned business by just two people. Some people might feel like they deserve some loyalty or like they don't want to hurt this business that's owned only by a couple. And some people get a little too comfortable with familiarity. I mean, I know I personally, I think especially am very comfortable with familiarity to possibly a fault of my own. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. 
That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.